this is Bruno. But his job is to take a pizza off the end of this line and put it into the oven. Pretty cool, huh? Not only does Bruno make a great artisanal pizza pie, he never calls in sick. For argument's sake, it's a he. He never needs a vacation, no pension or benefits, and he doesn't complain. In many ways, he's the perfect employee. Do you like truffles? Sure. All right, let's make one of those and signing it to the robots. Co-founder of Zoom Pizza, Alex Garden, an expat Canadian living in Silicon Valley, calls this a cobot environment. It's a, a seamless marriage of robots and humans working together. Right now, Noel's making the crust using these machines. And then we have these sauce dispensers. These are Pepe and Jojo. And their job is to put the sauce exactly in the center of the pizza. And this is Marta. And Marta's job is to spread the sauce. Uh, you know, it's not even two years yet, um, but we've already won uh, over 10% of the market share in our trade area um, and without really trying. Cutting edge technology will soon enough make this totally automated from start to finish. In five years, you may even have a drone or a self-driving car delivering your pizza. This disruption of the labor force has been sneaking up on people for decades. With technology taking on jobs in manufacturing and agriculture, any type of manual labor has been a target, making some jobs obsolete. But artificial intelligence is taking it further. The target right now and in the future, white collar work. As computers are able to compete with the human brain in more complex ways than ever before. They can learn and analyze, and that means highly educated and high paying jobs are the next big target. The concern, if people don't take this seriously, they will be left without work. Really it's happening already, but it's in a subtle, uh, slightly unseen way. So it's not just... Sunil Johal is a Canadian expert in technology and public policy. He says Canada could see anywhere from 1.5 to 7.5 million jobs lost over the next decade due to automation. And while there's no consensus on just how many, the fact is jobs are already being lost. We're used to the manual labor jobs being taken by uh, machines, but now we're starting to see in uh, fields like medicine, law, investment banking, dramatic increases in the ability of computers to think as well or better than humans. And that's really the game changer uh, here because that's something that we've never seen before. Think about banking. ATMs started replacing bank tellers in the 90s. Not that long ago, Goldman Sachs employed 600 highly paid U.S. cash equity traders. Today, there are just two. They get the same amount of work done with the help of 200 computer engineers. I don't think outsiders would necessarily know that people are losing their jobs to software. But as a, an employee of the bank, you know, it was everywhere, so everyone was aware of it. Tori Shorman worked in the mortgage department at a major Canadian bank. She sat by and watched as her colleagues were shown the door. I witnessed about 40% of my department get laid off, and the reason they were given was automation. Um, when the layoffs started, um, they, the first round was without warning, and it was about 20% of our department. The department itself was about 130 people. And then we learned that, you know, further automation was going to occur and that this just wasn't the first time. So people started f worrying a lot, thinking, oh, I'm next on the chopping block. And the race is on to create intelligent automation that can learn, make decisions, outthink the best and brightest. Ready or not, drastic change is coming. Really, nobody's immune from this, and we all need to prepare as if uh, this might be coming and affecting our jobs, no matter what we do. And if there's no fighting it, then maybe the smart decision is to get ahead of it. So what we're really doing is building the next generation of legal software. And these facts are actually taken from the Supreme Court of Canada. Benjamin O'Leary is co-founder of Blue Jay Legal. His software does much of the research of a lawyer. 
So in the past, what you've done is gone to a law library and walked through the stacks and found the books relevant to your case, and you'd you know, produce often a stack of materials to read, and then you'd go back to a desk and spend many hours working through all of those hard copy materials. So what we could do is pick this tangible expenditure classifier and then we For could... example, have a question about an upcoming legal matter, tell it your problem, and it will analyze huge amounts of case law. It then creates a personalized solution. It's kind of grabbing these snippets from its database and producing a tailored explanation that's sensitive to the facts as we've entered them into the system. What this software does in moments would take a human days to do. How fast is the computer system learning? Uh, it's learning really quite quickly. So when we started training it uh, about two years ago, it was about 65% accurate and now it's over 90% accurate. So that's a pretty stark improvement in, in accuracy. But Benjamin hasn't completely given up on humans altogether. He is also training the next generation of legal minds. All right, good morning, let's get started. Um, it's interesting, uh, in this course, we're encountering a number of different new technologies. Do you ever talk about just the changing nature of what their job will be in technology? You know, the job of a lawyer in 10 years compared to what lawyers were doing 40 years ago, is that a conversation you sort of prepare them for? Absolutely. So one of the things that I do as a law professor is use some of the, the new tools that we're developing here at Blue Jay Legal to assist in the classroom. So I think the millennials see in this kind of technology an obvious ally in advising their clients. So it's a way for them to be better, stronger lawyers and to really test their intuitions. And, and in years past, it was just technologically impossible to do that. It's only a good ally if you know how to use the technology. Best case scenario, know how to create it. I think in the future we're going to see most people aren't going to stop their education once they get out of high school, college, or university. They're going to have to become lifelong learners. And that's what Tori Shorman is doing. At 32, she walked away from her job before it wasn't her call. I described the day that I gave in my two weeks notice as just shell shock. All my friends were so excited for me, saying like, oh, you're living the dream, you're doing what you want. but. It was terrifying, to be honest, to, to give that up and to go without a paycheck for, eight, for two or three months. But um, now that I'm in it and doing that, like I'm way more confident that I've made the right choice. Shouldn't this be the key? Her choice was to take a chance on something called Lighthouse Labs in Toronto. They offer a three-month intensive course to essentially master coding. It meant radically changing her career, like many Canadians are doing now. Oh, I know. This is good. This is good. Let's do our PR page. <laughs> so far it's been two weeks and it's definitely been a, a huge challenge. Uh, a lot of ups and downs, but I mean, we'll see where I am in eight weeks. <laughs> School founder Jeremy Shackey says a single class can have students in their teens and some in their 60s. There's a great conversation going on right now about coding as a more of a blue collar job, if you will, and that it's really for everybody. Um, it's, this isn't about being a math wizard. Um, there are a lot of jobs there for people who just want to build, want to create, and a lot of jobs don't have that impact. No wonder then, hundreds showed up to this one day event in downtown Toronto to inspire people to learn code. Some may even say adapt. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the HTML 500. So Lara, what brought you here today? Um, an opportunity to learn about microprocessors. Children do it instinctively, but for people that haven't grown up with it, it's overwhelming and it's everywhere. Teaching people how to code. The concern is how complex some of these skills are and whether everyone can keep up. Why coding? Why is it something you think you need to be learning right now? I think it's like a fairly almost essential skill nowadays. Like everything has to do with IT and for getting jobs, like having coding background is really important. So is not learning an option, do you think? Well, if you want to be left behind, sure. And not wanting to be left behind is why Tori walked away from the world of finance and put her future on a new path. And while, you know, my career may not look like what my grandfather's career looked like in terms of like stable full-time employment and climbing the ladder, um, there's still gonna be lots of opportunities out there. For me, it's just, it's just new and different. There's nothing wrong with that. Not only is nothing wrong with that, it's what the future looks like for Canadian workers. 
A world of change is ahead. Many of today's jobs won't be the jobs of the future. And all that increasingly intelligent technology will make sure of it. Renee Filipponi, CBC News, Toronto.